September is National Chiari Awareness Month as well as National Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. So let's talk about these conditions. Yesterday I presented the case of a 26-year-old female who came to my office complaining of migraine headaches for years. She described the headaches as occipital, meaning they started in the back of her head and they got worse if she sneezed or coughed. I asked the question why that is. When you cough or sneeze or do what's called a Valsalva maneuver, which is what you do when you go number two, you actually increase the intracranial pressure. If you have a condition that alters your intracranial pressure, these can actually worsen your symptoms. The MRI of her brain showed Chiari malformation, and what I am seeing when I look at this MRI of the brain is that her cerebellar tonsils, or this portion of her brain, is not supposed to be right there. This portion of her brain is supposed to end at the foramen magnum, but what's happened in Chiari malformation is a portion of this brain hangs down too low and obstructs the flow of fluid. Our brain makes spinal fluid and it naturally circulates in the brain and down through the spinal cord. So if there's any condition that obstructs this flow of fluid or even alters the production of fluid, you can get increased intracranial pressure. It's also called hydrocephalus. You can see in a normal cerebellum, the fluid will bathe around the cerebellum and down through the spinal cord in what's called the central canal. Her MRI of her cervical spine, you can see because these tonsils hang down, the fluid flow is altered and there's increased fluid that in actually goes through the spinal cord itself and causes what's called a cervical syrinx. As I mentioned before, the fluid should actually flow behind the cerebellum and not be obstructed. The cerebellum is a portion of our brain that controls balance, and in some patients you can actually be born with too much cerebellar tissue that hangs down too low and it can obstruct the flow of fluid. That can cause migraines and the symptoms that I mentioned in her presentation. But you're telling me it's congenital and she's 26 and she's just now figuring out she has this problem? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying because in a lot of cases of Chiari 1 malformation, they don't get diagnosed until their later childhood or early adult years because they don't become symptomatic until that time. There are four types of Chiari malformation, but for this video, we're only gonna talk about type one. That can cause headaches, balance troubles, numbness and tingling in the arms or legs, dizziness, neck pain, vision problems, and even coordination problems. And in really severe cases, it can cause hoarseness and even trouble swallowing. So if they have any of these symptoms, an MRI scan of the brain can help diagnose this condition by looking at the cerebellum. There's a special test called an MRI with CineFlow where we can actually watch the spinal fluid circulate in cases in which we're not quite clear if there is an obstruction or not. So why do we have these symptoms in this condition? The symptoms of the headaches are obviously from the increased intracranial pressure because of the blockage of fluid. That fluid may be forced down through the central canal of the spinal cord and what's called a syrinx can develop. And when you have that fluid that's forced through the spinal cord, it can cause swelling of the spinal cord called a syrinx. And that syrinx will lead to the balance troubles as well as the symptoms in the hands and legs, including numbness, tingling, and even loss of sensation. Well, how do we fix it? Let me explain how we do that. First, make an incision overlying the back part of the patient's brain. We then remove a small portion of the skull called a suboccipital craniotomy, as well as a laminectomy of the C1 vertebral body. That gives us the access we need to get to that portion of the brain. Once that's done, we then open the dura or the covering of the brain. We first remove the cerebellar tonsils that are hanging down and then do what's called a duraplasty. Basically, we sew a graft onto the back part to give it more room for fluid to flow. In our patient's case, once this was diagnosed, she underwent surgery to have the Chiari decompressed, and after she recovered from the surgery, she had complete resolution of her symptoms. If you know someone with Chiari malformation or hydrocephalus, I hope this video helps. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.